OWC has been supplying Mac users with upgrades for more than two decades, and their newest offering is a Thunderbolt 3 dock, which connects to a host Mac through a two short but included 0.5 meter Thunderbolt cable. A major selling point of the dock, like most, is that it can support two 4K displays at 60Hz with one connected to the mini display port and one through the pass-through Thunderbolt 3 USB-C port, a gigabit Ethernet connection, and up to six USB devices. Differentiating it from most, it also has a FireWire 800, optical toss link, and a SD card reader. As with most Thunderbolt docks, it works driver-free in macOS, but the FireWire 800 port doesn't work in bootcamp at all. Mass storage devices, input devices, and output devices all work perfectly, just like they were natively plugged into a host computer. The power supply is once again massive and hot. This is probably related to the charging power demands and in all likelihood will pertain to all Thunderbolt 3 docks, especially those that supply full power to a connected MacBook Pro. A possible selling point for the dock is the SD card reader. There are a variety of speed ratings for SD cards these days, and we've got a few on hand. SDHC cards transfer at full 25 megabyte per second speeds. SDXC cards will reach about 80 megabytes per second, a bit less than the peak 105 megabytes a second allowed by the specification. Some cases and docks don't support UASP, which allows for faster file transfers than gear that doesn't support it. The OWC Thunderbolt 3 dock does in fact support it, so check that one off the desired feature list. As with the CalDigit TS3 Lite dock we tested, dual 4K displays operate without an issue. Additionally, the LG Ultrafine 5K display can be daisy-chained off the dock with no issue, and no connectivity limitations for the onboard ports. However, as with other docks, don't connect anything to the monitor while using the dock more arduous than a keyboard. The demands on the Thunderbolt 3 port when you add the USB-C on the monitor plus the dock's ports are just too great. We've got an assortment of FireWire 800 drive enclosures we've had for years, and they all worked fine. However, buying a $300 dock to use them may be throwing good money after bad. If the enclosure is newer than a decade old, it probably uses SATA drives. If this is all you need the dock for, you'd be better off getting a new enclosure and moving the drives over for a more universal compatibility. The most probable class of equipment demanding FireWire 800 connectivity on a 2016 MacBook Pro are audio interfaces. The first hurdle is Sierra compatibility. Some devices just don't have Sierra drivers. The second is physical connectivity. Without FireWire, the devices won't connect either. In limited trials, the Universal Audio Apollo FireWire and Apollo 16 FireWire worked properly in Sierra through the OWC Thunderbolt 3 dock with the latest drivers. An officially unsupported Alexis Multimix 16 worked with the hack. Only one unit could be connected through the chain, but that's a limitation of the driver and not the dock. Here's the problem with reviewing docks. They work without hacks, or they don't. They supply sufficient charging power, or they don't. Easy enough. Buyers select a Thunderbolt 3 dock not on reviews, but based on the ports that they have. If you want FireWire 800 and you've got a 2016 MacBook Pro, options are limited. Users can either drop about $100 to get Apple's Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter and then a Thunderbolt 2 to FireWire 800 adapter, and even that is iffy and not universally compatible. For $200 more, a single cable solution can be had with FireWire 800 devices in the mix with either dual 4K or 5K plus all the other connectivity the dock brings. That's what will sell the OWC Thunderbolt 3 dock, more than any words hammered out from a test bunch. While the $299 price is steeper than other options, the added connectivity of the SD card slot and FireWire 800 will sell the dock to a good portion of legacy Mac hardware users who want new gear. For more news, reviews, and how-tos, check out AppleInsider.com and subscribe to Apple Insider on YouTube.